Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we have a Murray, I think. What is it? No, Yard Machines. Yard Machines mower that um, I got from a neighbor and he wants me to take a look at it. It does not work. Um, he has a whole bunch of mowers that he, I think, wants to sell. And so I have a couple of his and I mean, we're going to take a look at them together and see what's wrong with them. See if we can fix them. Uh, and if not, try and figure out why they, um, why they died, uh, why they are in this state. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing I notice is that there is no air filter or air cleaner assembly on it. Um, that is not good for it long term. And let's see what we got in here. It's got fuel in it. It doesn't smell actually half bad. It does not smell terrible. Let's see if the, uh, what about oil? Got oil. It's a good thing we checked. Oh, let me get a pliers. No, oh, that's in there tight. Oh, I don't want to break it. Wow, that was definitely in there way tight. It uh, has oil. It's right up to the top there, so should be good. Looks pretty new, actually. It's like terrible. Let's check the cables and linkages. Sounds good there. What else? Uh, and check the spark plug. What's this? Oh, it's got one. Don't know if it has spark. We'll check that. What else we have? Governor. Uh oh. That does not seem like it moves. So that governor linkage there should definitely move. Let's see, is the light getting you? How's that? So yeah, it uh, doesn't move at all. And I don't know, I don't know whether that's because of the throttle butterfly in the carburetor is stuck or whether there's something internal with the governor that's preventing it from going. It's hard to say. Well, anyway, um, before we continue, I'm gonna power wash this thing and try and clean it up some. I'm gonna see if I can stuff like a sock in here. Oops. So that uh, water doesn't get blasted into the carburetor and into the engine. It doesn't have an air filter cover or cleaner. Well, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> it is full of mud in there. Hold on, let me see if I can get a light. Yeah, I don't really think that that's very good for the engine. I think that's going to cause us a problem. What do you think? <laughs> We already know we have a problem in here that is full of mud. So before we start messing around with the, the spark plug and trying to get the engine to, to cough or, or pop over, let's get the carburetor out of here and see what the damage is. So, ten, ten, yep. so there are two screws here. Actually, I should get a clamp and uh, clamp the fuel line off. Let me do that. Hopefully that'll be good enough. Let's see, there is one more up here. The 10 millimeter tube. Can we get to that without taking this shroud off? 
Let's find out. All right, let's see if this will now come out of our way. What are we held up on? Nothing. Oh. Well, there's that. Uh, it's yummy down in there, doesn't it? Well, yeah, that, uh, not sure that this one's going to be coming back to life, uh, the, this carburetor. Well, there we go. Let's see if we can undo this linkage so there's a, a anti-bounce spring here. That's disconnected. And can we... Uh, we're going to have to get the fuel line out of the way. Let me get uh, some tools for that. I have to get that clamp off and this hose off. I pulled the uh, primer bulb and the air, the, the plastic intake off and ooh, that's going to be fun. All right, let's get this fuel line off. doesn't want to come. Uh, a short fuel line. There we go. Uh, this should come. Yeah, this should come off now. And that will release. There we go. One nasty carburetor. Hmm. Glad we didn't shoot some gas in it and try and, and get it to kick over. It's just full of mud and rust, so. Uh, it, uh. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can uh, wipe some of that out of there. Then we'll work on the carburetor. I wiped what I could out of uh, there and I, um,. Uh, blew some compressed air in there, try and get the rest out. I'm sure there's still some up in there, but that'll have to do. This, uh, we're not going to take the cylinder head off or anything like that. Uh, you know it's going to be bad, so why don't we just start by pulling this bowl off and seeing what's inside. Getting right to the... Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, so look what's coming out of it. <laughs> I don't think that's... I think it's water and maybe a little bit of gas and a lot of rust. All right. Can already see the rust in there. <laughs> oh yeah. Think that would run? Think that was probably a problem, don't you think? There's a jet up in there, a brass jet. Yeah. I don't know if that's gonna come out for us. Uh, let me get the let me get the right tool for that. Uh, let's see if this one will work. You want a screwdriver that just fits in with not a lot of shoulder because you want uh, the you want to grab the brass thing. The brass the brass jet will strip and you want as much contact as possible. Do we get it? Or do we strip it? No, I think we got it. It's coming. All right, there's the jet. There's an emulsion tube up in there. Uh, well, yeah, that. There it is. There it comes. 
see if I can push this thing down. Let's see if can you guys see. It's hard to see in there. But there is an emulsion tube that I want to push down. There it goes. There it is. Good. And I actually don't, they don't, the jet and the emulsion tube don't look terrible. So, <laughs> so that, that's good. Um, problem is the bowl, the bowl is actually growing crystals on it. So, that's, yeah, I don't know that that's, that's probably not going to clean up for us. Maybe in a sandblast, I don't know. Yeah. Huh. Let me scrape at that for a while. Huh. It's amazing there wasn't more damage. I think that this happened relatively recently. I don't think it has been sitting like this for a really long time, honestly, which maybe it's saving grace. We're still going to have to address some of this corrosion on the especially on the side of the bowl, but the bottom of the bowl there doesn't look bad. So we you seeing this? Yeah. So we may be okay. Huh. Who would have thunk it? I have myself a bunch of used sandpaper here. <laughs> Only the best. I'm not even, and this looks like used 120 grit. So uh, maybe it's like 220. I don't know. We're gonna, there is a coating, anti-corrosion coating on the bowl, but I'm pretty sure we're past that. So let's just, remove all of the crustiness and see what we're left with. And so, so this is a really, this is a cheap beater lawnmower. Um, they are super cheap. And I think it's, I think it's a power more engine. I'm not even sure exactly what kind of engine it is, but, um, these things are, are super cheap. It's what you would use in like a, a rental unit or something like that. Nothing special. They're super light. I mean, the whole thing must weigh like, I don't know, 40 pounds. The whole lawnmower engine and chassis and everything. So it's not worth putting a um, new carburetor in this mower. I say we just get this one, see if we can get this one working as best we can. And leave it at that. If it lasts two years, you'll have gotten your money's worth out of it. Just like new. <laughs> Almost. I don't soak the gaskets in carb cleaner because they have a tendency to um, swell and then you can't, you can't get them back in the groove, they're too big. Why don't we... Why don't we look at the emulsion tube? There is rust. There is some rust down in there. Hopefully it didn't get up inside of it. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, there are a bunch of tiny holes in this emulsion tube and they all have to be clear and I think they all are, but what you can do, so I have this welding uh, chip cleaner and you can take like, the smallest, smallest one on this and you can kind of poke through the holes and they should go all the way across like that. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to take this and poke through every single one all the way across, make sure that they are all clear. This one may not be. There we go. You can shoot carb cleaner down, and if you block the uh, um, the bottom passage, you should see the the spray out the the sides from all those holes. 
So you like that? That's good. We're good. We're clear. All right, so that's done. Let's see next. Jet. Same thing. This is the jet. And it has a hole in it that is supposed to be clear. It allows the fuel to be drawn up from inside the bowl and get uh, into the intake. And this one is completely clogged. Let's find the right... I don't know. Is that one maybe too too big? This one? I think it's I think it's 100% clogged. Let's start with the smallest one because we know this one will go through or should go through. There we go. Eh. The next one. That's good. And uh, these uh, welding welding tip cleaners, there it it has like a little bit of a serration, a roughness, almost like a file on them. So you can really like in the case where the jet is plugged and it's got rust and buildup and corrosion blocking it, you can really work it and get it all out because you want it to be completely clear. And many of these engines these days are, are made with uh, the jet is, the, the, the jet opening is probably slightly too small for the engine for emissions. So even if you open it up ever so slightly, you're probably actually doing the engine a favor. Um, so that seems good. And so if I, blow, if I shoot carb cleaner down here, you should keep, see it come out the, um, the top. There, see. Hard to see, but there we go. Look at that. Let's see if this rust will come off here. Actually it does, not too not too bad. But uh, actually, you know what, let's um Let's take that, uh, let's take the um, float out and uh, take a look at the needle and the seat. All right, so I'm gonna use, this is a 1 16th inch punch and there it goes. <laughs> but you can, uh, a lot, sometimes it'll be stuck. You need to take a hammer and kind of um, tap it out. Uh, let's see, here we are. Nasty from the garage floor, but as you can see, so this particular, this style carburetor, so we want to stay off the um, needle with the carb spray. This style carburetor, the rubber sealing uh, portion is on, actually, yes, it's got a rubber tip on the needle, so that's what actually seals. Um, so it, when the float, so when the fuel is empty, the bowl is empty. It's it's sitting like this. The float is down, and then when it when it come when the fuel starts filling up, it'll it'll raise the float and it'll push the the needle against the seat and shut off the fuel flow. That's how it meters how much fuel actually gets into the bowl. Uh, gosh, this. whether this is going to work. Hmm. How about the, oh, that is nasty. We may have to take this butterfly out. How's that? Ugh. That, yeah, look at that. Look at that all in there. I think we're gonna, can I get this gasket off without destroying it? Come on, just very. Okay. 
let's not strip that. Oh gosh. That is, that is really, really tight. I'm gonna have to wire wheel that. Does it matter which way this goes in? I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it has a, a curve or a set to it. I think it can go in either way. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. What else we got in there? Yeah, we got a lot of, got a lot of build up in there. Let me go and hit this with the air gun, see if I can blow any of it out, then we'll come back with the carb cleaner. Oh, forgot one thing. So, this is the idle set screw. Not that this thing can idle, I don't think, but um, it, it's supposed to set the idle, but it also holds in the, the idle, I think it's like an idle air mix screw. And... Um, Use this. You can pop this out. And this is another small jet that can be cleaned. So we can see that there is goo in there a little bit. So we'll clean that. But now that everything is apart, let me go blow this out with air first. Then I'll hit it with carb cleaner um, and see where we're at. All right, blew it out with some air. Still pretty crusty but all the big chunks are out let's just blow all the passages out with carb cleaner apparently that one's connected there I'm actually not too worried about getting it spotless I just don't want anything dislodging any particles or anything so if I can shove like a paper towel, a clean paper towel down there with some carb cleaner and just wipe it out. That's really all I'm looking for. I don't need to get in there and clean it to where it's it's perfect. It's just the, the, the mixing chamber for the air and the fuel. Um, so as long as the passages are, are clear and we're not going to get stuff dislodging and getting into the engine, I, I think we're okay. You gotta be careful and really hold it because the wheel will want to fling this thing across the garage and then you will never find it. There we go. Alright, I think we're done. Now it's time for reassembly. Yummy, huh? Got a pile of pieces. Let's put it together. First thing, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna put in the emulsion tube and the jet before something happens to those. Let's use that long screwdriver. Don't need to crank it down, just tight enough. There you can see the emulsion tube sticking up through the center. Um, what next? Let's put in the throttle assembly. Let's see, I believe it goes like that. Does it go like that? Yeah, it's got to go like that. Alright. Did it go like... must have gone like that. Actually, it went like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on. Get in there. You guys are making me nervous watching me struggle with a simple screw. Something's not right, doesn't want to go in. That's because the tip, well, you can't probably see it, is uh, stripped and it's corroded. It's got a chunk out of it, so let me ooh, let me go see if I can find another or tap and die or just force this one through. My personal stash of screws, or part of it, these are M2.5 and M.3 screws, at least some of them. At That looks like it, doesn't it? I think it is. Alright, so this is a metric 3 by 0.5 thread. I think that's the right screw. Now look at that. Just like butter. Alright, now I shouldn't have any problems. That's good, nice and uh, doesn't stick. Actually, before we put that carburetor back on, let's deal with the fuel. And I think there's only one, two nuts holding this fuel tank on, so I think it's easier just to, to buzz those off and, and drain the tank that way. How much water? I'd say quite a bit of water, actually. What do you think? Maybe not, a uh, little bit. Let's let, let's let it settle. I was wrong. It's actually a lot of water, maybe a quarter water. If I tilt that, uh, can you, I don't know if you can see that, but a line forms right around there. So the whole bottom of this thing is, is water. Can you see that? The gasoline floats to the top and the water sinks to the bottom. So the entire bottom is covered in, in water. So yeah, that, that was uh, never gonna run. One more test before we uh, put the carburetor back on. So you can hear the float in there. So when the carburetor is right side up like this, I should be able to blow into the, uh, the fuel intake and air should be able to go through. So I can. If I turn it upside down, the float should close off the fuel inlet and I should not be able to blow through this. And I cannot, so the carburetor is working the way it should. Um, the fuel tank, we drained that fuel out and I actually let it soak in the sun um, while I had lunch and then I blew it out with an air compressor and it is clean as a whistle in there, nothing in there. So. I think we are good to go with reassembling everything and giving it a, a yank to see if it'll start. All right, here we are. I actually um, put the, I actually attached the fuel line and the carburetor together um, before putting it on. It's actually a little bit easier than to try and wrangle that fuel line onto it. this thing. Let me, let me clean this up a little bit, wipe that off, be back. I got all the goo cleared out of there, so it's fairly clean. Clean enough to put back together. Uh, 
Uh, I know we haven't checked for spark yet, but uh, I just, I need to try it. I want to try it. What do you think? How many pulls? I guess we will check for spark. Oh yeah, it's sparking. Got plenty of spark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dribble a little bit of this two cycle fuel into the spark plug hole, give it a kind of a kick start. Get it up fire over a few times and uh, give it some lubrication in there and hopefully that will allow it to continue to stay running on its own Does not want to start. I've taken things back apart and I have hooked a compression tester to it. All right, there we go. <laughs> what are we at? 60, uh, just under 65. That's not very good. Is it good enough to run? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know about this particular engine, but that's that's uh, it's pretty low. Just to be thorough, I pulled the uh, flywheel nut off, and I can't really tell if that flywheel key is sheared or not. It's hard to it's hard to say. I don't think so. But, I don't know, maybe we, we try and pull the flywheel off just to make sure. There it goes. Not sheared. Looks fine. Well, put the flywheel back on, but I don't think it's going to run. I think that what happened was that the uh, air cleaner and the cover uh, had been off and it was out in the weather. Water got down into the intake and it actually got into the uh, cylinder and it probably rusted the valves and the valve seats and who knows what it did to the bore um, that's why we see compression so low like around 65 and I think it's just and it could be that I it it kind of I don't know if you ever saw it but it kind of pops through the intake when you go to start it when you when I put the um, fuel into the cylinder uh, through the spark plug hole it pops out of the intake that tells me that maybe the intake valve is sticking open. Well, it's not sticking open, it's probably rusted and corroded and being held open. So I think that's it for now. Um, maybe we'll be seeing this again, maybe not. If the um, guy lets me keep it and um, dissect it, we can figure out exactly what is internally wrong with it. So we may or may not be seeing this again. 
and um, well, you win some and you lose some. Not everything can be brought back to life. So with that, I want to thank you all for joining me and I will see you on the next one.